getting underway in the big orange triaxle here. I'm heading out of the pond. I've got a load of spoils. And I'm, I'm heading to um, one of the sand pits that we often use. I wanted to talk with you about winter work at my employer. We are uh, an asphalt company. We also do pipe laying and we do grading and other stuff. But because a lot of our work is asphalt, things slow down a lot during the winter. Now, our, uh, my, my employer is very good about uh, taking care of its drivers. And, and one of the things they do is when there's uh, limited work for dump trucks, they find other work for us to do um, uh, to, to keep us busy, to make sure we get a, a full paycheck. This is my first winter, so this is all new to me. Uh, the civil construction company I worked with last winter, um, they rented their trucks out. They, they found other, other people who needed hauling during the winter time. And so, uh, uh, unless the weather got bad, we were driving um, you know, every, uh, pretty much every work day. Where I'm at now though, uh, during the winter, when, uh, when there's not that much uh, hauling to be done, uh, it's my understanding that we do things in the shop. Uh, we um, we uh, do uh, a thorough cleaning and detailing of our trucks. Uh, some of us, I, I believe, will do painting, and uh, and then just other other things that need to be done, uh, cleaning up the shop or moving stuff around getting ready for when things get busy again. Uh, January and February are, are slow months. Uh, but then um, uh, things start to pick up. Because we do pipe laying, uh, some of the, the site prep, some of the uh, trenching and other stuff can be done earlier. And then even when we're doing asphalt, there's prep work that can be done. And so it, it really does depend on the weather. Sometimes it's it's uh, early to mid-March. Sometimes it's it's uh, it's a little bit later. Um, so you won't see as much of me in the truck over the next couple months. I'll use some archive video just to just to sort of give the sense of yes, this is about dump trucks. Um, but I'll, I'll focus on um, some of the budgeting stuff. I'm uh, doing my best to connect with. A, a truck dealer. Uh, I hope to talk with um, some brokers or owner operators who run their own business. And I might even try to get um, uh, some of my friends at Iron Sheepdog to come onto the channel and talk about how, how uh, software systems, brokers, uh, customers and, and haulers all work together uh, to get things uh, done efficiently and uh, profitably for everybody involved. So uh, having said that, let's, uh, let's focus on the road here for a bit. We're still hauling quite a bit of material. The pond is a big project, a lot of, lot of dirt to move. There's another orange triaxle going the other way. Uh, the end is within sight. I'm not sure exactly when, but most of the heavy hauling will be done soon. Uh, Right now, I'm going to put on some music, speed up the video, and let's just enjoy the ride. This is a very easy drive, very pleasant road. On the left, through the woods, you can see the interstate. 
So I don't usually get on the interstate for this little run. There's, there's a section of interstate, it's, I don't know, maybe two to three miles long that I could get on. With a heavy loaded truck like I have, it, it, it struggles a bit to get up to highway speeds. So it doesn't really save a whole lot of time to go on the interstate. And the Naval Weapons Station is coming up on our right here. This road was put in to connect uh, two key parts of the, the defense efforts in World War II. It connected the, um, the Newport News shipyard with the uh, Yorktown Naval Weapons Station. We're going to slow things back down here. We're coming up on the turn for the sand pit. You can see this is the first run of the day. The sun is still low in the sky. As I come around the corner, I'm going to reach down and uh, raise my, my drop axle. There goes the Mac Quint. So the sun is causing a bit of a glare problem here. I'm being careful as I go around the corner here. I've already turned on my strobe lights. Driving through the glare and the dust, I know I'm having trouble seeing um, other vehicles, and so I want to make sure they can see me. So here comes another Mac Quint. It looks sort of like the one we saw just, just 30 seconds ago. I don't know if it's for the same company or not. Uh, I have a special place in my heart for Mac Quints, if, if, if you haven't noticed that already. As I go around the corner here, <laughs> visibility is not real good. So I, I'm going to fidget with my sun visor again, and I'm going to keep fidgeting really for the rest of the video. And so right there, I drop my right hand from the steering wheel. You can't see it, but I'm, I'm operating the switch that puts the tarp back. I need to uncover the load before I get to the scale master, uh, really at all sites, but uh, here, especially first run of the day, they want to see what I'm carrying in the, in the bed of the truck. Once they see, they're going to tell me where to take the material. Let's speed things back up and put on some music until we get to the dump out area. pull in here and then back down to the dump out area because of technical difficulties. I can't give you the side view. After breakfast, I forgot to put a memory card in my second camera, so my apologies. Thank you for tuning in today. It's, a, it's fun for me to, to do these ride along videos. Uh, I hope you, uh, you feel like you're actually in the truck with me. Um, I uh, appreciate, uh, appreciate you joining us on the channel. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. If you have any, any comments, any reactions, uh, any suggestions, please put them in the comment section below. And uh, as always, uh, be safe out there. Watch out for sun glare. I hope to see you again soon on the Dump Truck Toolbox.